for Columbus, another publisher. Another rejection? I have no idea. I do not read your letters. But they keep arriving, and I keep bringing them to you. And I keep hoping... You all keep hoping for your success, Miss March. The entire boarding house keeps hoping. You have us all on edge. <laughs> My dear Miss March, I read your story. Well, he's read it. Unfortunately... Unfortunately, I found your tale tasteless and vulgar, not at all suitable for my readers. My advice to you... My advice to you is to return home and have babies. <clears throat> this is what women are made for. Sincerely, F. Putnam. Twenty-two. Twenty-two? Twenty-two rejections since I've been in New York, and they all say the same thing. Go home, give up. F. Putnam is an idiot. His words are stupid. F. Putnam is one of the most powerful publishers in the city. You cannot lose faith, Miss March. There will be someone who will like your story. I am certain of it. Professor Bear, is it possible I could read my story to you? I would so admire your opinion. Yes, uh, of course. <laughs> Actually, it's one of my best. It's a mean and stormy night. The moors are bleak and bloody. Thunder claps, lightning strikes. Miss March, tell me, what is it you are writing here? Blood and gut stuff. It's all the rage. The magazines and periodicals are full of it. Violence and seduction on every page? Read Shakespeare. Read history. Read the newspaper. It's getting late. Perhaps it is best we pursue this some other time. No, I want to know what you think, Professor. Blood and guts stuff? What you think the world wants to hear. If I have noticed nothing else about you, Miss March, I have noticed you are unique. Something you should try not to forget. I think you could do better. Better? And, and who are you anyway? An aging German professor? Close to 50? I am 34. 34? Really? Well, you look a lot older. I worry a lot. And just what do you have to worry about? How to avoid a conversation such as this. Now, I will go to dinner. Miss March, since you have been here six weeks now, is it? You shout, you rant, you upset the whole order of this boarding house. I am a serene and peaceful man. You're aloof. You're arrogant. Arrogant? Miss March, I spoke my mind as you spoke yours. Obviously, it was not appreciated on either side. Obviously, my stories were a great success in Concord. <laughs> Boston, I have dreadful news. 
What news? With the war ended, grandfather's insisted I get on with my life. He enrolled me in school. What? I'm going off to college in time for the summer session. Uh, that's wonderful news! What's wonderful about it? Leaving the best friend I've ever had? I can't imagine life in Concord without you. Not seeing your silly grin every day. I don't want to go. But you've got to go. This is an incredible opportunity. Oh, college. I'd go in a minute. I'd study everything. What do you need of schools? You're going to be a famous writer. <laughs> famous? I need to tell you something. Tell me something. Ever since that first day I saw you, do you remember that day? Of course. Uh, the day you chopped down Grandfather's Chair Street. I knew then that you and I would be magnificent together. We are magnificent together. My sweet Joe, for weeks now, months even, this whole year actually, I've wanted to... What was that? A kiss. I know it was a kiss. It was my first kiss. I've thought about it a long time. What's got into you? Look, I, here, I took a part of my inheritance and I bought you this ring. A ring? What are you talking about? I want to marry you. Marry me? Stop this, Lori. It's not funny. I practice saying the words over and over. Marry me. Marry me. Have you gone mad? I love you. No. Joe, and I want you to be my wife. No. No. Find someone else. Find... Find some accomplished girl. I don't want an accomplished girl. I want you. Well, you can't have me. At, at least say you'll think about it. There's nothing to think about. I'll never marry. You don't mean that. I do mean it. You'll marry. I won't. You will. Just not me. That's what you're really saying. You'll find someone and... Go away. I thought you understood me. You knew all along how I felt. Everyone knew. You knew all along who I am, what I want. I bared my soul to you, Lori. Go away. Joe! Please, just go. Congratulations! I am... what is the word? Amazed. Flabbergasted. 
<laughs> and delighted. Christopher Columbus, today I feel anything is possible. You were right, Professor. About what? <laughs> Everything. I'm going to be a published writer. I can't believe it. Fifteen dollars and twenty-five more for my commission. You are <laughs> rich. I feel rich. Do you dance, Professor? No. Neither do I, but today I could! <laughs> we should celebrate your success, Miss March. Have you ever been to the Broadway Gardens? Are you asking me to dinner, Professor? No. Yes. I should like that. Uh, Miss March, I almost forgot. In all the excitement, this telegram came for you. More good news, I suspect. Open it, Miss March. I will. Today I could start a revolution. I could. What is it, Miss March? Is it not good news? Dear God, no. My sister Beth has contracted scarlet fever. She is gravely ill. I must go to her immediately. I'm sorry, dear. Sorry for you and your family. Is there anything we can do? No. Thank you, Professor. Miss Kirk, tell your girls... They'll be fine. Tell them to keep reading. I will. Thank you both for everything. Miss March! Uh, I would like... To accompany you. Accompany me? You, you should not travel alone. I traveled here alone. I'm not afraid. I shall be fine, but thank you. Miss March! You will be back. Of course I will. And Miss March. Bye, Blue. Yes, I need good luck. Professor Bear! Hello. Hello. This is a surprise. I know. You wrote, if I should ever come north, I should come visit you. Yes, but I... I never thought I would do it. Well, I did it. I am here. Should I go? No, I... I, I am not intruding. You're not intruding. Come inside, I'll introduce you. No, no, not yet. So how is Mrs. Kirk? As impossible as ever. And the boarders? As strange as ever. And you? Me? The same. You look... Old, I know. Nearly 50. You're 34. 35. You had a birthday. They had a party for me. I get sick. I do not like parties. I'm... I brought back your manuscript. It was so good of you to send me uh, the book to me. A, a novel. There's no one whose opinion I respect more than yours. Forgive me for presuming You touched me deeply, Miss March. I, I saw you on every page. I heard your voice. I felt your spirit. It, it was magnificent. I often think about you, Professor. I wonder how you're doing. I bought a kite. You bought a kite? Soon after you left. I bought a kite and took it to the park. I never had a kite. You know, you were right to think I was old. I, I was old. No, I... I, I was. was. But since we've met, everything is different. Everybody noticed that. My students even, they say, Professor Bear, you are smiling today. Miss March. Joe. Joe. We are not alike at all. We have our differences. May I be blunt? Be blunt, by all means. <laughs>